Aloha and welcome back to Aina Bear Farm. Today I wanted to bring you guys a short video about our different fast growing nitrogen plants that we use um, on our farm here, mostly to help enrich the soil, in some cases put up some shade for our fruit trees that we're growing. So if you haven't seen our video on convert or videos I should say on converting pasture to food for us, go back and check them out. We've got our original one where we talk about removing the guinea grass and how we kind of lay out some of the design elements and then an update to that showing um, some of the varieties of fruit trees that we put in. But in this video, we wanna talk specifically about some of our supporting roll plants. And so right here, I'm down in front of some sun hemp. This is a crotillaria that's been bred kind of as a cover crop. So this is really good used in annual garden vegetables and around the base of trees as well to just cover up the soil, pump some nitrogen in. If you leave these for a while, they'll get these beautiful yellow flowers that just can really kind of brighten up any space. Um, and I'll just show right here down in front is our um, Mexican sunflower next to those as well. And there's Lucky, the farm cat. Hi, Lucky. <laughs> uh, Mexican sunflower, not a nitrogen fixer, but just another supporting plant that we have here to bring in some good um, pollinator bugs with the flowers and suck up some good nutrients from the soil as well for chop and drop. Um, as I just move over a tiny bit here, this is a wild crotal area. So very similar to the sun hemp, but the sun hemp has been selected and bred to um, grow a little bit differently as a cover crop. But here you can see the flower stalk is about to open up and the little seeds, which look almost identical to the sun hemp seeds. This is right up next to our one of our Jaburikaba plants. And so I just come through every once in a while, cut that down, lay it down next to the Jaburikaba. And I swear it seems like when I cut it, about a week later you see a flush of growth pop out on the Jaburikaba plant. Um, it's just kind of cool. Seems like a testament to the fact that it's just pumping goodness into the ground there. Uh, as I pan back a little bit, we'll see another really important plant that we use in a lot of spaces. This is Gliracidia, or Madre de Cacao. I've probably brought this up in other videos as well, but um, just to talk a little bit more in depth about it now. Um, it's a fast-growing nitrogen plant. Uh, is a tree, if you let it get up to that size, sometimes referred to as quick stick. It makes a really good living fence, and we'll take a look at how we're using it like that in just a minute. But I just wanted to really quickly point out um, some of the growth. This is about a month it did this, and you can see the thickness of the original stalk. That was just a trimming that I got from a friend, stuck it in the ground, and then in a month it busts out all this new green growth on it. The thicker stalks about the size of the one that we're looking at right now, which is about maybe three quarter inches in diameter, um, seem to do a lot better than the thinner ones in terms of propagating from just a cutting. All right, so let's go have a look at where we're using the Gliracidia as a living fence. So here you can see where we've got several Gliracidia plants planted right along our barbed wire fence line. So ordinarily a barbed wire fence is definitely not enough to keep pigs out. They will nose up under there and push it around, maneuver it, bend it. They don't seem to mind the barbs at all. So sometimes they even come and scratch along it, um, you know, for itching. And so as we put these in, we will slowly close in the space that they can get through. So you can see I've got one there that I planted and about a foot over, I had put this smaller one in and it never took. We go one over and we'll see one more, but that's about the spacing that I wanted, about one every foot. And again, you can see the really fast growth on this. So the great thing is once you get a few of these going and they get solid branches coming off, you just trim those solid branches off, throw them in the ground, and keep it moving. You can keep expanding your living fence. Once it gets up all the way up to the top, you can do a few things. They have beautiful flowers that'll bring pollinator bugs in. Um, they look really, they, you can trim them so they look really good. You can let them go full shade to help as uh, shade support plants for your ecosystem. 
you can um, then of course just keep them pollarded at the top just keep cutting them off and then do chop and drop with that material there's just so many benefits to having a living fence like that really cool stuff okay, right here i want to take a quick look at a couple of other great nitrogen fixing plants that we use here uh, this one right here is moringa so a lot of uses you're probably familiar with this plant almost all of it the parts of it are edible maybe all the parts are edible uh, grows really fast it's kind of a superfood super dense nutrition um, but it can also work pretty well as a, um, a living fence type plant and then you get that added benefit of having parts of it being edible or treating it like an edible but it grows really fast you can grow it from cuttings very similar to the gliracidia in some ways right next to it is koa so this is a, a really important plant in Hawaii. It is um, one of the plants that are considered uh, endemic or, or native. And uh, this grows to be a huge tree. Uh, where we are in our elevations, these are known to reach 100 feet sometimes. And so these are trees that we actually are using to demarcate our zone five. And so they're way out at the close to the edge of our property. We planted several of these. Yeah, they're also fantastic lumber. That was what the Hawaiians have used them for in the past and still do use them for um, to make all kinds of really great uh, things made of wood out of them. And um, the super dense rot resistant hardwood that's really, the grain of it is really beautiful. So this is not a tree that would do well with chop and drop. Um, I don't think it grows well from cuttings. It's usually grown from seeds but um, just a really useful, great tree nonetheless. Right here, we've got sleeping grass, sometimes called the sensitive plant or the sensitive fern. This is a ground cover, kind of a creeping nitrogen fixing plant that um, is well known by many because when it's handled, the leaves fold up or go to sleep as they say. It's just kind of neat. Kids tend to love these just for that fact. The only issue with these is that they are covered in some pretty gnarly barbs. I'm gonna see if I can capture that. So, with Lucky helping me here, it can be a little difficult, but probably see some of those barbs on there. Makes it difficult to walk around this stuff barefoot um, or even wearing slippers, uh, AKA flip flops. Um, you can get your, the top of your foot caught on them and really scrape them up pretty good. That's not a good feeling. Um, otherwise, this stuff is pretty good. I mean, ground covers are really um, in high need to just keep that ground covered from the harsh tropical sun. Obviously, they're pumping nitrogen into the ground. You can see all the little flowers on here. Every one of those can spread into hundreds of plants. And that's where one of the crucial components of these nitrogen fixing plants comes into play that a lot of people consider these types of things to be invasive or you know, to be weedy because they can spread so easily. And that's why they just have to be managed. They need to be allowed to grow in the right places. Um, this is not something I would wanna grow in a place where I'd wanna be walking around barefoot, for example. Um, but right here, it works really well. And so I don't see any reason to get rid of it. And of course, it just shows up on its own. There are several other plants that do that on the property that um, I don't even know the, exactly what the identification is, but they look so similar that I know they're nitrogen fixing plants. These, for example, same type of flowers, similar leaf pattern there. And this one, also the, um, the very uh, prototypical, focus on that maybe we need some light a um the legume seed pod Let's see if i can get to focus on that I have to hold it out a little bit <laughs> well maybe you can tell a little bit from that but um you know just the typical looks like a bean pod tells you that it's in that legume family and technically not all legumes Fix nitrogen, a lot of it has to do with what bacteria and inoculants are present in the soil in that area. Um, but they're all good soil builders, uh, ground covers, 
just really good helper plants in general. All right, so this is the last plant that we're gonna talk about today. This is um, called a monkey pod tree. It is a very fast growing, easily spreading, uh, nitrogen fixing tree that um, is also can be considered problematic in some places. They're starting to um, ban the growth of these in public areas all over the state of Hawaii, um, mostly just because they choke out native trees. Um, but again, if they're managed properly and you're coming in, you're coppicing this, doing chop and drop with, chop and drop with it, just using it as a fast growing shade tree to get up over your fruit trees can be really beneficial. And then of course, bumping that nitrogen into the ground. So it's a very useful tree as long as it's managed properly and it can be very beautiful as well. All right, so that is our quick little tour. Uh, I'm looking at some of the nitrogen fixing, quick growing plants that we use here in our food forest conversion at Ina Bear Farm. Uh, there's tons of other ones that are out there. Uh, there's just these very typical themes with them that you have to be careful that they, they spread easily. They, um, they're very advantageous plants. They'll grow in places that other plants won't grow. A lot of times they don't care about soil conditions. They're very drought tolerant. They can handle being overwatered. Oh, they're just tough plants that um, can do at least okay in the most circumstances, which makes them so useful. But you have to manage them. You have to put them in the right place and you have to have a plan for them. You don't want to let them just run away and grow muck. You can really um, upset your neighbors <laughs> when you do things like that. And you can really upset the own your, your own ecosystem balance in your area and end up with something that's um, not what you intended it to be. Um, but there's plenty of other ones out there. So if you have any great um, suggestions for other plants like that, um, could be in Hawaii or really anywhere, um, we could run a conversation about just great nitrogen fixing, quick growing plants in different ecosystems as well in the comments section below. Um, but definitely get in there and chime in. Um, and certainly if you have other great plants for Hawaii, because it is pretty um, specific, the things that we can and can't and should and shouldn't use here, um, definitely chime in about that in the comments section. Uh, give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, we're gonna try to get on a roll here and have a lot of videos coming your way. And then if there's anything that, um, as you're watching these videos, you see that you think you'd like to know more about, again, let us know in the comments section. We'll try to make a video just about that. All right, we'll see you next time here at Ina Bear Farm.